What's poppin'? How's it going? How you doing? I just wanted to jump in here real quick to make a video on dead zones inside of Destiny 2 and how you can use them to enhance your gameplay. Now, I'm not going to lie. Uh, they updated this like two weeks ago and I forgot that they existed until yesterday. So I started messing around with them, started playing with them a little bit, and I understand how they both work as there's two different dead zone settings for Destiny and how you can best utilize them to enhance your gameplay. So I'm hoping that this will help you understand what's going on with them and enhance your own gameplay. So let's hop in real quick and explain the two different dead zone settings. You have axial dead zones and you have radial dead zones. Let's break these down first so you, you can sort of mentally picture what's going on. Let me hop over to this diagram to better explain what's happening. So this diagram here, picture this big green circle as your analog stick and picture my mouse cursor as the input you're putting on the analog stick. So if I'm moving my mouse to the left, that's you inputting uh, your analog stick to the left. Let's start with axial. Axial are these blue rectangles that sit along your X and Y axis. The whole point of these is to make it so that you can look directly to the left and directly to the right, directly up and directly down without your aim kind of going all over the place because precision is sort of hard on a analog stick when it comes to looking directly exactly in one direction. So the point of these blue rectangles is to make it so if I start looking left, so if I move my mouse to the left, i.e. our analog stick, I will start looking directly left in game. However, if I move it slightly up or down inside of this blue triangle, it will still only look left because that is the dead zone for your X and Y axis. However, if I move past the blue rectangle, I will now be looking left and slightly down at the same time. Same if I move it above, I will now be looking left and slightly up until you can change all the way up to an up input. The point of these is to sort of give you linear control over your analog stick without worrying too much about having exact precision while you're in the heat of battle. Now, if I adjust my axial up or down, it'll increase the size of these blue rectangles. That's the base for axial. We'll come back to that in a second. Radial is, I'm sure everyone's familiar with this, it's the dead zone setting that most games let you customize. It's just this red circle by itself. And all it does is make it so that if your analog input is anywhere in the circle, it won't register any input until you get past the red circle. And then whatever direction it's going, it'll start going in that direction. That one's straightforward. That one makes sense. If you want more crisp um, micro adjustments while you're aiming, just make that lower. If you go too low, you'll notice that you're flicking all over the place and it's hard for you to track. So you adjust that one until you feel just right where you have full control over how your analog stick wants to move in accordance to your aim. But how do you adjust axial to best benefit you inside of Destiny 2? First, let me hop over to some examples, but let me start by explaining that I play on a very high sense, and whatever sense you play on does affect how these play into your aim and how you might want to adjust the knobs for them. Uh, I'm a high sense player. I play on 18 look with 0.6 ADS. So how I understand these and how I adjusted these might help you better if you play on high sense. They still might help if you play on a low sense, but I don't know how they feel and affect your aim uh, if you're used to playing on a low sense. But I'm used to playing on a high sense, and adjusting these can also help you with your movement, where because you have more finite uh, control over how you are aiming, you get to looking faster. There's less movement between you know, the middle of your analog stick to the, the left if you lower your dead zones, so you can start turning quicker sooner. Now it's a very small amount, I'll give it that, but it does help your movement a tiny bit if you lower them. So now that we have all that out of the way, let me break down some examples and how you want to apply these dead zones without messing your aim too much. Because if you want to, hop in there, set both of these inputs to zero, you might get stick drift, and then slowly turn up just axial, until you don't get stick drift anymore and then see how that feels. You'll notice you have really, really tight control over everything, almost too much to the point where you feel like you have no aim assist. So let's jump into some examples. So looking at here, this is a radial problem where while it's slowed down, I'm trying to accurately track this guy, but I'm just slightly off and the 
natural aim assist of the game is keeping up with it. But if I turn down my radial, I'll have a little bit more precision in this engagement and probably be able to laser the head. This is the same deal. And radial will help a lot more in close range like this. So I start tracking on the head and he last second sidesteps. But if I was able to increase my precision in close range by lowering the radial, I would have been able to follow his head more accurately. Now, I do want to input here that radio will increase your micro adjustment tracking uh, with targets in close range, sometimes at long range. A good way to gauge this is just to use an AR while adjusting your radial and you can sort of tell if you're overcompensating or undercompensating. You kind of feel like if you have too high of a radial, you'll do what I like to call your aim feels like it's stuck in the mud, where it feels like it's dragging behind and you feel like you're making the micro adjustment to adjust the character's movement on your screen, but it feels like it's just lagging behind. Then you want to turn it down a little bit. But if you feel like you're overcorrecting and you're zipping past everything, then you want to turn it up to, to adjust to the sweet spot where your aim, your thumb has full control over aim. Now, when you go to adjust axial, it sort of compounds with your radial. And the reason I say that is because if you're watching your own gameplay, the only way to know if you need to adjust it or the feel you need to look for when you need to adjustment is when you're tracking someone to the left or the right um, and they jump or they crouch. And there's a vertical movement that gets added on to your left or right movement that you're trying to track. You'll notice that sometimes when people jump or they crouch, you'll go to make that small adjustment up or down while you're already holding left or right, and it'll feel like your aim is again stuck in the mud, where they jump up or they crouch down and you make the micro adjustment to track it, but your crosshair doesn't move down that fast or doesn't uh, quite hit that mark of precision that you're looking for, so probably turn your axial down at that point, and that'll give you more control while strafing looking left and right and then needing that slight up and down to track a character's movement that suddenly makes a vertical change while you're using the horizontal aim. That's the best way to explain it. Let me show some examples now. So right here, this guy is moving to the left, and he jumps, and I need to make that slight adjustment upwards. If I had lowered my axial, I would have moved up a little bit quicker and potentially been able to track his head a little bit better as soon as he jumped but the aim feels a little slow because my axial input was higher at this time. This is a slow example, it doesn't show too much, but if I was going to track this guy's head, hypothetically speaking, if I had a lower axial, I could have held right and up at the same time and had better responsiveness. Now, I know that my axial examples were not the greatest, but it's just to give you an idea of what to look for in your own gameplay to know if you need to make adjustments. I find the best way to understand what exactly what is going on with your aim is just to watch it back and then slow it down so you can know exactly what's going on and maybe what adjustments you need to make or you might be able to feel what's going on inside of your own gameplay while you play and then make adjustments from there. Now I do want to note that if you move your axial too low you will lose that linear precision that it's supposed to give you and so if you find your crosshair bobbing up and down too much while you're moving left or right probably bump it back up because it will make it feel like you've lost aim assist inside of the game. Axial is part of why the tracking feels so crisp on controller. Now if you made it to the end of the video, thank you so much. Um, I will give you my settings if you just want to try them. I run a 0.11 on Axial and a 0.06 on Radial. So if you want to just hop in and try mine and see how it feels, go for it. That's sort of a little gift to you if you made it to the end of the video. But if you're sitting here confused and you have no idea what's going on, sorry about that, but maybe try some other people's videos as they might have better explanations or better ways to understand what is going on with the dead zones. Thanks for watching. See ya.